Now first off I want to show you the damage we do with a single punch on Carl here. Pretty good, right? And that's with Outlier's Handshake. Next I want to show you the damage in a 2020 power level Lost Sector. I am currently 1979 power level, so I am 41 power level under, and just watch what we do to these enemies. Even with skulls next to their names, and we just bully the Overload champions as well. All while being 41 power level under here. Now the point I'm trying to make is that Liar's Handshake, in my opinion, is not the exotic you should be running. The first thing I thought with Prismatic Hunter was Combination Blow, Liar's Handshake, that would be great, right? And I've promoted Liar's Handshake on my channel over the past year a ton. But after actually testing different builds and exotics, and even using different aspects and fragments than you might think you should be using, I came to the conclusion that Liar's Handshake is a big waste of your exotic slot. Yes, it does give us more overall damage. However, do we really need that extra damage? I mean, this gameplay that you're watching says we definitely don't need it. But hold up, Plunder. What about the extra bit of healing Liars gives us? Well, that's a great question, fellow Guardian. Since we don't have to run Liars, it opens up a lot more options and allows us to run even more damage reduction and healing within the build. What's even better is what we provide to our entire fire team now by dropping Liars. We are normally playing with other Guardians in harder content, right? Like raids, dungeons, and Grandmasters. Because let's be real, 99% of us aren't trying to solo Grandmasters out here. So we are playing in a fire team and what's the most important thing for all of us guardians like in the new raid that launches later today which have fun by the way well the most important thing is having your teammates survive in that difficult content especially when you have limited revives with res tokens and need to get something done so we actually even drop the fragment stylus executioner as well i know i sound like a madman right now but going invis only boosts your own survivability when you have a limited amount of reses it doesn't help your team and as you can see, we don't even need Invis 41 power level under. So we're going to bring a new aspect to this build, and that will increase your entire fire team survivability drastically. And then we bring a different exotic to increase it yet again for great damage reduction for everyone whenever you need it. I know that was a bit of a longer intro, but I hope I got my point across as to why you need to put Liars down and try this build. So make sure to pay attention because you won't regret it. Now for our super, we are taking the Strand Threadrunner super. It's a great overall super, but it's going to play into one of our fragments big time to really boost survivability. For your dodge, of course, we take Gambler's dodge. You refund your melee charge when you dodge near an enemy. And then our melee is Combination Blow. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this over and over from builds by me or from other channels. But basically it can stack to times three for extra damage on every punch and when you do get a kill with this melee it refunds your class ability instantly and our class ability refunds our melee so you have infinite dodge and infinite melee for that combo now the grenade we're going to take is dust field grenade this leaves behind that field that slows targets and freezes enemies inside this is important because it's going to add a lot of damage reduction. And to get the chain started, you can lead with this dust field grenade because it has quite a big area of effect and it's going to let you get in close to enemies. And that's going to pair perfectly in with our first aspect and that is Threaded Spectre. We take this instead of Stylus Executioner. First off, we get one extra fragment with this. It comes with three instead of two. And every time we activate that class ability, we leave behind that strand decoy. Now, after taking significant damage, or when enemies approach it, it'll detonate for good damage and releases two threadlings out for extra damage. But the point is, since we're dodging and meleeing all the time, we're leaving behind one of these clones on every single dodge. So this is adding extra damage, but the main reason for this, all of those enemies' attention pull right to that clone. So essentially think of having this as invisibility. If the clone only lasts for 3 seconds, it's like you were invisible for 3 seconds. If the clone lasts for 12 seconds, then it's like you were invisible for 12 seconds. But not only that, it works for your entire team. So let's say you have three fire team members with you, you're standing on a plate and you dodge. Well, every enemy around is looking at that clone and not at your fire team members. So you're adding group survivability big time with this build since you are leaving so many clones in your wake. The next aspect we take is Winter Shroud and that's just dodging slows nearby targets. It also increases our class ability regeneration, but that's not as important because we get it back off our melee kill. This comes with three fragment slots as well, so we actually get six fragments with this build, which is nice. So essentially what you do is throw your dust field grenade, then just dodge. 
That means you froze a group of enemies and left a clone, so nothing's looking at you. Run forward, melee one of those frozen targets from the dust-filled grenade. You instantly kill them and proc a big shatter burst that does great damage and start your combination loop. Then you just dodge right there again, leave the clone, and just go through the rotation. You actually get your dust field back in about three kills because of the way we have the build set up. So just make sure to add that dust field grenade in after about three kills. Now these fragments we're gonna add into this make this build really strong, so pay attention. The first one is Faucet of Ruin. This increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or a frozen target. So every time we shatter all those frozen enemies, we're dealing great damage. Our melee actually gets a damage boost by hitting a frozen target. I believe it's about 30 or 50%, but that's one way we add melee damage to the build. Also, we do create a stasis crystal every time we throw our dust-filled grenade. So we get the bonus damage burst from that as well from Faucet of Ruin. Next, we take Faucet of Purpose. This is gonna give us a Woven Mail every time we pick up an Orb of Power. And that's because we're on the Strand Super. Woven Mail is a 45% damage reduction for six seconds. Now, every melee kill we hit, we will get Woven Mail from it because every single melee kill we do will spawn an Orb of Power thanks to how we have our mod set up. And you don't even have to look for the Orb of Power because it just drops right on top of you because you were in the face of the thing that you were meleeing. So you just get that instantly. Next, we take Faucet of Protection. When three or more enemies are near, we get that extra damage reduction. That's on top of our Woven Mail. So we're already just stacking damage reduction. I like to take Faucet of Bravery with this build as well. When we kill things with our melee, we apply unraveling rounds to our strand weapons. And as you can see, I use two strand weapons with the build. We also take Faucet of Courage. This allows our Arc, Solar, and Void abilities to do increased damage to opponents that are afflicted with Darkness debuffs. This means our Arc Punch will do a lot more damage to frozen targets. And then we take Faucet of Balance. Rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants melee energy, which isn't as important because we get our melee back from our dodge melee combo. But the second part here is rapidly defeating targets with darkness damage grants grenade energy. This means that strand clone that blows up or the threadlings that kill things can give us grenade energy or the burst of stasis from the crystal or shattering the frozen targets will also give us grenade energy, which just keeps that dust field up left and right. Now the exotic we're gonna pair with this is Renewal Grasps. This has the Depths of Dustfield perk. It increases the radius of the Dustfield, and then allies inside the Dustfield gain frost armor, and targets inside the area deal reduced damage. Now this got changed this season, and it allows us to stack frost armor up to times five, which gives us roughly about a 23% damage reduction. And we give this to our teammates as well. And if anything is inside our dust field, it does less damage to us. But just alone, that's a 23% damage reduction we give to ourselves and our teammates. The dust field lasts about 10 seconds on the field and the frost armor lingers for another 10 seconds. So essentially it lasts for 20 seconds and you're easily getting another dust field grenade back in 20 seconds with the way we have our mod set up. So when you combine this frost armor times five, that's so easy to have all the time, we combine that with the 45% damage reduction from Woven Mail. Then we combine that with Faucet of Protection for another 25% damage reduction. And you're freezing everything. And you're leaving Strand Clones on the battlefield to distract enemies for you and your fire team. As you can see, that's how we stack so much damage reduction and ways to survive. Now let's get into the mods because these actually make the build much better. On the helmet, we take a dynamo and a hands-on. So when we dodge near enemies and kill things with our melee, we get extra super energy and then a harmonic siphon just so the strand weapons can spawn orbs of power. On our gauntlets, we take three copies of heavy handed. This means we can spawn an orb of power every one second. So every time we get a melee kill, there will be an orb of power there. On our chest piece, it's just damage reduction mods. Pretty simple there. And then on our boots, we take recuperation. So replenish health each time you pick up an orb of power. So on every melee kill, that orb that drops literally on top of you is gonna heal you, your melee healed you, and you gain woven mail from it. Then we also take Innervation and Absolution. Both of these just to feed that grenade ability. Innervation gives 10% grenade ability and Absolution gives 5%. So a total of 15% from one orb of power and you're spawning one of those on every kill. On the class item, we take Reaper to spawn another orb of power with a weapon kill. And then we take Bomber. So we get a good chunk of our grenade back every time we dodge. Now for your artifact mods, we do want Transference. Gain increased grenade and melee damage while transcendent. So we should be using our transcendent to get extra damage with our melee, which I don't even think I showed off in the gameplay. We also take shield crush because when we have woven mail and frost armor, our melee recharges faster and deals increased damage. 
And then while we are amplified of radiant, your grenade recharges faster and deals increased damage. Speaking of amplified, just by getting those melee kills, those arc melee kills, you're going to become amplified and this plays right into galvanic armor where we have another source of damage reduction because we're amplified. And then we take Radiant Orb. So when we pick up that Orb of Power for Woven Mail, we also become Radiant. And that plays right into Shield Crush. While you're Radiant or Amplified, your grenade recharges faster and deals increased damage. Those are the four artifact mods you wanna have on the most. And for any type of ability builds, which you guys know I love to do on the channel, that's what you're gonna need. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I know this was a longer video. I hope you enjoy the raid today if you are partaking in it, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.